September. I can't afford to replace you, but you are now covered in energy drink. Forgive me, please. <laughs> Do you guys remember when I made this? I, you might do. It was a couple of years ago. It was for the Bunsen cage. I had no idea that I still had this thing. I assumed by this point it had been reused in some other project and repainted. But I found it among my stash of scrap wood and I've decided I want to use it in Lemonade's enclosure because Quite frankly, it, it matches the theme perfectly. And also the emotional trauma I received from painting these bricks requires me to keep using this over and over and over again until it falls apart. The paint was looking a little bit worn from having been stored among scraps and sharp things, so I did give it a nice new coat of green and a darker shade of green that I think looks really lovely. Um, however, it would seem as though I have not allowed it enough time to dry. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this back down. Ignore everything that's going on behind me. Yes, this is... A thing, a thing is happening, not a big thing, not an exciting thing, we're redecorating. I'm not sure why I'm being so secretive and coded about it. And you know it would be fair if you're currently thinking to yourself, Ollie, is it really a good idea to start on a new project when you are clearly in the middle of a more significant project? To that I would say, do you really think I'm gonna start a whole new project while I'm in the middle of a completely different project? No, 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 I plan on starting this new project while I'm in the middle of one, two, three big projects, which I am on a very tight schedule to complete. In fact, they have to be finished by tomorrow afternoon. Now I've heard all of it out loud and realized just how much work I have to do before tomorrow afternoon, and it's like 10 o'clock at night now, um, it is dawning on me that perhaps, perhaps I have taken on a little more than I can manage, and that it would not be in my best interest to do the snack project right now. Just maybe. I, I should, I should, I should wait and finish at least one of these other projects and then do this one, since this one does not have a time limit on it, it is not that important. Yeah, you know what, I'll be back in a second. Ta-da! I finished two out of three of the jobs and I consider that a win. Anyway, let's take a second attempt at this video with just a little bit more coherency. Here is the shelf that I forgot I had or thought I no longer had. Um, it is looking a little bit different again from just seeing it a few moments ago. The green is a slightly different shade because I'm incredibly indecisive. And if you're willing to use your imaginations for a moment, no, it does not have a strange form of rainbow chicken pox. Those are supposed to be flowers. I have of course added a safety barrier, which I have made from uh, lolly sticks and perspex. But what you will be seeing in today's video is a little bit of a rearrangement of lemonade stuff. This is what our enclosure looks like currently, um, not too different to the last time you would have seen it. But I do like to change things up in there every once in a while just to keep things interesting, to keep lemonade stimulated and enriched. Unfortunately for me, lemonade has turned out to be a ghost hamster, which means I basically never see her. I see food disappearing from the food bowl, I hear the wheel rattling occasionally at night, and sometimes things move around. But I've noticed that every time I move the cage around a bit and rearrange things, I do get to see her just a little bit more for the few days following that. So this is basically my way of bribing her to come out and interact with me so that I can, you know, enjoy the hamster that I waited 16 months to get. Once the shelf was in, I didn't have a solid plan for what I was gonna do next. I just had two vague goals in mind. Number one, add more climbing spaces for exploration. And number two, create more overhead coverage for the lower levels. I used a scrap piece of wood from an old project, this is from the old cat wall that we made in the last apartment, and used it to make a corner shelf with a strip of cork as the edge barrier. To join the gap between the two shelves, I made a bridge using jumbo sized lolly sticks and a strip of cork. I attached a pair of wooden dowels for legs and used a hinge to add a wooden ladder. The hinge ensures the ladder stays securely fixed in place while being easy to move out of the way for spot cleans.
And for the other end of the shelf, I made a couple of platform steps. I swapped out the sandbox for a slightly smaller but deeper container which is much better for digging in and moved it off the shelf and down into the substrate level where the cocoa soil dig box used to be. Now that it's getting colder, I wanted to add some cozier top dressing to the floor, so I covered it in a layer of shredded green tissue, which I think I bought in the IKEA kitchen section. This is also a really efficient way to add a pop of colour to your cage without spending very much money. The old sandbox has been renewed as a forage box, it's filled with a mixture of coconut soil, dried leaves and dried flower heads, and honestly it smells so good. And this is one of my walnut treat puzzles. It's a very simplified one since Lemonade hasn't tried one of these before, but if she likes it I'll give her a more difficult one later. This is another very simple boredom breaker, it's just crushed berry smeared onto a dumbbell toy and I've added a little screw and hook in the top so it can be hung. Hanging these toys makes them just a little more challenging as it requires the hamster to use a bit more effort to keep the toy steady and earn the treat. Then I found these lemon print tissues in the supermarket so obviously I had to get them and I used them to cover this peekaboo house. This is just a cardboard box with doorways cut into five of the sides and it's a useful toy to place in open spaces as it provides shelter without being an awkward obstacle to navigate around. Above the mini chamber hide I hung a corner hammock that I made from green fleece. Now I'm not anticipating the lemon will use it as a hammock, even though Syrians do often enjoy them, Lemonade doesn't really like to sit out in the open so I think she'll ignore it, but I included it to provide some shelter because this corner was feeling very exposed. And of course back in goes the cloud bridge which also helps to provide coverage for the centre of the cage. Finally, I added some dried bugs to the forage box, hiding them among the flowers and in the cocoa soil, so Lemonade really has to dig around to find them. Now let us all hope that these offerings to the Lemon God are enough to bring her out into the open just for a moment, just so that we may gaze upon her wondrous glory. And of course if I get to gaze upon her wondrous glory, you will get to gaze upon it too over on my Instagram stories. I try and post her as much as I see her. So the fact that you don't see her very much over there really highlights how little I also see her. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a thumbs up. You can also comment down below. I am open to video suggestions at the moment. Uh, if you want to see anything in particular or if you have an idea that you think I might have fun making, go ahead. Go ahead and leave it down there. I will read it and possibly do it. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and I will see you guys whenever I see you. Bye!